Okay, we are picking up with Julius Caesar, um, Caesar who, out of the first triumvirate, emerged as um, the sole leader. Dictatorships had been temporary, but the Senate appointed Caesar to be dictator for life. First, they appointed him to be dictator for 10 years, and shortly before he um, died, he was appointed to be dictator for life. So this is where we're starting to see a role that instead of a republic, the Senate still exists, you got one guy in charge. This is the change in that terminology of a dictator. Caesar is a popular ruler. Um, you see this coin here. I don't know why he has such a weird neck. But he's the first living Roman um, to appear on the money that they use, their coins. His name is there. He is basically, it, it's, you know, where Cincinnatus stepped out of the limelight, didn't take that opportunity um, to gain the personal fame and fortune and um, ceremonial pomp and circumstance, pomp. Um, that's different for Caesar, okay? He wants his likeness to be known and to be seen. He's this one person starting to gain this authority over Rome. He's popular with the people. Um, one of the things he did was uh, grain subsidies, so kind of like the government, a little bit like food stamps today. So since the economy had been struggling, um, you're enabling people to get more food for lesser cost if needed, so that's taking pressure off of families who were starving. Um, he uh, essentially, you know, kind of like New Deal stuff, if you studied U.S. history um, and the Great Depression, that the government created new programs to get people jobs in the civic um arena and sort of same by building state parks, things like that. Um, and same deal here that you've got people hired by Rome to do things like build bridges. So he's very popular among poor classes, among everyday people. Um, he allows a lot of gladiator games, which we'll get to for celebrations. So super, super popular guy among the public. But Julius Caesar will be killed on the Ides of March. Okay, so that means the middle, um, so March 15th of um, 44 BC, stabbed to death by angry senators. Not a pleasant way to go. Um, this is not fitting quite where I want it to be. Um, he goes there, and uh, you may have heard the line, A2, uh, Brutus, and you as well. You also, um, for his friend Brutus, who was also one of the, a younger senator um, who had been one of Julius Caesar's friends, um, and so meaning you also, you would betray me, these people who would betray Caesar, um, and they um, are upset, even though he's super popular among the people, that he has taken too much power, that he has overturned these traditions that have been in place for 450 years at this point of a Senate ruling Rome. It's gone, all of this power has gone to one person. And obviously, if the Senate appointed him to be dictator, or the majority of senators, then some liked him. But there was an angry mob of senators who were concerned. It's captured most by this guy named Cicero. Um, Cicero, a famous um, Roman orator um, who was not one of the stabbers, but uh, Cicero saying here, our tyrant Caesar deserves his death, for his was the blackest crime of all. Julius Caesar was a man who was ambitious to be king of the Roman people and master of the whole world. 
The man who maintains that such an ambition is morally right is a madman, for he justifies the destruction of law and liberty. So, saying he deserved this. Um, he is trying to destroy the liberty. He's trying to be king of the Roman people. They hadn't had that. It was a senator, a senate. Um, there were elected um, officials. There were temporary positions for uh, people with more authority. And now that's being overturned by one man having more power. So... Julius Caesar killed in 44 BC. Now here's part of the problem. Caesar stabbed to death, but they didn't plan well for what would then happen. Um, and so we get into a situation where, ironically, the next major ruler, we're in this transition from a republic to an empire. These people, the senators who killed him, still trying to... Um, defend that idea of the republic and not having one man rule things, but it's ironic because we will get a more powerful leader who emerges um, after this. Because what happens is we now get a second triumvirate. Three guys, Lepidus, he'll be the, well obviously he was important as uh, another successful military figure in Rome, Mark Antony. That looks probably a little bit like a um, V on your screen, but it's a Y, um, whose head looks like a plate of spaghetti, and Octavian. Mark Antony was close to Julius Caesar, um, he was um, in battle a lot with him. Um, you may have heard the line, maybe you've read it, um, from Shakespeare of um, the funeral uh, eulogy, basically, of Julius Caesar, where Mark Antony says, uh, friends, Romans, lend me your ears. And I love the spoof on that. Maybe it'll play the volume on this computer that um, I'm on. Oops, there's our video that I just uploaded before. Um, from Robin Hood Men in Tights, uh, where <laughs> Robin is... Uh, let's see if this volume will play. Do we have to watch an ad? Oh, you can't hear it. But he says, good people who have traveled far, lend me your ears. <laughs> That's disgusting. <laughs> lend me your ears. But Mark Antony, anyway, moving back, was saying, okay, listen to me. Let me, uh, in that, those funeral remarks of Caesar. Where'd my recorder go? Now I can't see my recorder. Am I still recording? Yes, there I am. Okay, so still recording. Octavian is um, the adopted son of Julius Caesar. Caesar only had that one daughter who uh, was married to Pompey, but Octavian um, was his adopted son, and he, um, where did my recorder go again? This button keeps disappearing. Pause. Okay, maybe I'm back. My, it shows me how long I'm recording for, and it has been going away, just so you know. Octavian was the adopted son of Julius Caesar and um, his great nephew. I don't know if there's a hyphen in that or not. I guess there would be, because otherwise it's a wonderful nephew. Um, so his adopted son and his great nephew. Uh, even if you're familiar with um, the Bible, it talks about being adopted in the book of Romans um, as sons of God. A lot of men who, um, that symbolic language in the book of Romans, written to the Romans because 
what a lot of wealthier Romans did is if they didn't have a son, they would adopt someone who was already a man um, to give him those full hereditary rights. So men, younger men were typically still adopted um, by an older man within their, their family. Um, so that's symbolic language that would be familiar to the Romans. So Octavian was adopted by Julius Caesar, his great nephew, and we get into, shocker, another conflict between um, these three guys, Lepidus, Mark Antony, and Octavian, because we'll end up with Lepidus kind of leaving the, the picture. He's sort of the crassest of before, and now we get stuck with these two guys competing against one another for power. Similar to the situation that united um, Pompey and Julius Caesar, these two have a connection. They're both very close to Julius Caesar. Um, like Anthony Octavian had, uh, you know, this close allegiance, as I've kind of already expressed. They'll go after Brutus. Brutus will be killed at Philippi, um, same place that was ultimately named for Philip Alexander the Great's dad, um, and also in the book of Philippians, uh, the people who are there. Um, Mark Antony's wife, oh, he was married several times, was Octavian's sister, um, Octavia. And um, he... Um, shocker, falls in love with Cleopatra, Mark Antony. Uh, he divorces Octavia, uh, goes and has a fling and a couple of kids with Cleopatra down in Egypt. Um, Octavian pursues Mark Antony to have him defeated and killed. Mark Antony, um, kind of this Romeo and Juliet basis, Mark Antony and Cleopatra both kill one another, uh, not murder one another, they killed themselves. So they each um, killed themselves. Cleopatra, um, famously by, uh, let's see what shows up here, uh, having these snakes bite her, um, which would, and you see depicted in these um, images uh, here of Cleopatra is not showing the um, snakes, but that's the supposed don't want to pull up uh, too many things that look gross, but these um, snakes there now worried about looking pornographic, and so there's a Twitter account for Piedmont Tech. Um, and Mark Antony kills himself, and um, poor Octavia, she had to raise her kids and Mark Antony's kids with um, Cleopatra. Octavian actually is going to have, it's still there, um, let me see if I can abort this again and look at, uh, well, I had Google Earth up, um, the, it's a, there's a gate to Octavia that he had built in honor of his sister, um, what's the name of that thing, um, it's like a, oh, I'm gonna have to look up the official name, uh, uh there we go, the portico of Octavia that's still there, so Octavian, when he has a little name change, is, where are we going? Where is it? There we go. Um, he will have this um, built in honor of his eh, sister. That's not it. Um, well, that's it, wherever it uh, is. It looks like it's on the outside here. Let's see. Google Earth woes again. If we can go around this little street and see it. All right, we'll take my word. There's this gate here, um, this portico of. Now I'm trying to get this thing. How am I going to get this? There. That built in honor of his sister. Very nice. I don't think my brother would have a gate built in my honor. So. Octavian um, is going to prevail, and we get a name change. Octavian becomes, drum roll, there we go, Oct Augustus. Okay. No! Dang it, hold on. 
Octavian in 27 BC returns successful. Um, he's conquered. The, he doesn't have to worry about his enemies and Mark Antony, who had been an ally, but um, then they were after power themselves. Um, and the Senate granted Octavian the title of Augustus, to where we get the name August from, July and August, named after Julius Caesar and um, Octavian, who became Augustus. And he's, it's where you get the name, your, you know, your high school principal, the main, the, the principal citizen, um, the main one. He is smart. He knows what happened to his adopted dad slash great uncle. He knows that if he tries to take over things too quickly, um, it will fall apart and he could be killed. So Augustus rules for a long time. So just, um, to go back well here, I'll start a new one. Um. Let's change fonts again, because uh, I don't particularly like the Bodoni or whatever it is either. We will go... Uh, Broadway's too dramatic. Um, I'm always a kind of dark person. All right, so Octavian equals Augustus equals, with that family name, because Caesar is going to become more of a title. Who's the Caesar? Who is the ruler? The czar, when, if you know Russian history, I think I mentioned that in class. So when you hear that, Caesar Augustus or Augustus Caesar, Augustus, that's one guy. Okay, Julius Caesar, when you hear just Caesar by itself, it's usually, it's going to refer to Julius Caesar. But again, it will become more of a generic title. And so there, we have that key name change. Augustus is considered the first um, emperor, change font color here to get that straight. So Rome is no longer a republic. One guy is making the decisions. He is picking his successor. And um, he rules for a long time. He rules um, from... 27 BC to 1480. Yay, the years are going forward. That is a long time. That is 41 years. That is a very long time for someone. So 27 plus 14, is that right? 27 plus 10 is 37 plus 4 is 1. Um, so 41 years. <laughs> People aren't living that long at this point. So that is a very, very long time for Augustus um, to get us to that transition to a Roman Empire. So, we'll end part three with that.